And on that subject, joining us now, old friend, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Uh, Senator Graham, wonderful to see you, sir. Thanks for helping us out. Thank you. Uh, I got a million questions, and I hope you'll help us with some answers. First up, was uh, President Biden, in your judgment, Lindsey, was President Biden resolute enough, tough enough, hard enough, or was it too much, you know, diplomatic speak, concessionary types things? How do you read the, uh, the uh, virtual call yesterday? Well, I really don't know because uh, I didn't see it all, but I know this, that if Donald Trump were president, Putin would not be doing this. And the reason he has 70 to 90,000 troops on the Ukrainian border, he's testing Joe Biden after Afghanistan. So what, what I want to do here, I want to help President Biden where I can. I oppose him almost on everything. But I believe Congress has a lot of bipartisan support to tell Russia that if you invade Ukraine, Putin, that we will annihilate your economy, we'll make your life miserable, and we'll fully arm the Ukrainians to extract a heavy price. So what am I going to do? I'm going to draft up a resolution trying to get Congress on the record to let Putin know you're not just dealing with Joe Biden, you're dealing with the entire congressional apparatus that you may doubt Biden's capabilities, but mm. you're sure as hell not going to doubt mine. Senator, I thought one of the biggest mistakes that I think plays a role here, maybe not the most important role, I don't know, you know more than I do, just saying it was a gift to Putin to take the sanctions off the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Right. Uh, why now there's an amendment, I believe on the floor of the Senate, there's an amendment that would restore the sanctions on Nord Stream 2. I thought it would be a good thing for Biden to, you know, put his stamp on this thing and say, OK, we're going to do that regardless of the outcome, regardless of whether Putin invades Ukraine. Why would that be a good thing for Congress to do, Senator? It'd be a great thing to do. It would bolster the case in the eyes of Russia that there'll be a price to be paid. But the, the greater question is, why would you try to go back into the Iranian nuclear agreement that has failed at every turn to stop Iran from being the world's largest sponsor of terrorism? During the negotiations in the actual agreement, Iran has dismembered Yemen, Syria, and they're the largest state sponsor of terrorism. Why would you give Putin a reward when he's done nothing but be the most destructive force in Central Europe. So the Biden approach is to coddle and reward people no matter what they do. The Trump approach was, if you don't help me do the right thing, I'm going to crush you. Mm. That was the Ronald Reagan approach. Mm. You know Ronald Reagan well. Why do we have a problem with China, Russia, and Iran? They see Biden is not up to the test. They're testing his mettle and they're finding out he's the tin man. Why is it that all the reports say if Russia invades the Ukraine, they got the building up to 175,000 troops center. Right. If Russia invades Ukraine, then we're gonna slap on these tough sanctions <laughs> in Nord Stream and banking in yeah. your inner circle and the oligarchs. But Senator, you know, I think Russia's done a bad thing right now. And secondly, yeah. they referred, I think we have a soundbite. I want you to hear the national security advisor going back to 2014 with the Crimea, which, if my um, history is right, is still run by Russia. They just annexed it. Take a listen to what Jake Sullivan said, please. I will look you in the eye and tell you, as President Biden looked President Putin in the eye and told him today that things we did not do in 2014, we are prepared to do now. Now, Lindsay, I don't know what the heck that means. I think it says, by the way, the, the Obama-Biden policy was a complete failure. But what kind of things we didn't do then we're prepared to do now? Senator, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. I know this, that between 2014 and today, you had Donald Trump. Do you believe the Russians, Larry, would be doing this on Trump's watch and your watch? We would annihilate the Russian economy if they tried to invade Ukraine. One, why does it matter to us? if Russia invades the Ukraine or tries to take over Taiwan. Let me tell you why it matters. You can't live in a world where people take land and property because they have the ability to do it through force. 
if you want an ordered society, when somebody comes into a business and wipes it out and steals everything and nobody goes to jail, you'll eventually lose the ability to conduct business. We're losing the streets in the United States. We're becoming a lawless nation. Do you really want to spread that to the world? The Ukrainians in 1998 gave up the nuclear weapons they had with a promise that if you give up your nukes, we will protect your territorial sovereignty. Russia, Britain, and the United States entered into that agreement. Do you think if they could go back in time, given what's going on today, the Ukrainians would give up their nukes? So you're about to lose world order here. We've been supporting Taiwan for decades with armaments and democracy building measures. We've enticed them to be a democracy. If we bail out on Taiwan, who's next? So the world is going to begin to, begin to crumble when rules don't matter and treaties don't matter. They broke the treaty with Hong Kong to ensure its democratic status. So the Ukraine matters to us unless you want to live in a world of chaos. Why didn't President Biden say this directly to Putin? I mean, this is the part I just don't understand. He said, things we didn't do seven years ago, we're going to do today. I have no idea what that means. But what you just said, I mean, look, let me put it um, a little bit differently, although I, I just love your insight here. If Ukraine and other countries want to choose Western democracy, right. Western market-oriented economies, instead of Russia, well, that's fine. That's a good thing. We would welcome that. It sounds to me like Biden saying, if you don't uh, invade and nothing bad happens, then we'll agree with you. There'll be no more expansion of NATO, no more expansion of the European Union. I mean, I think that, um, that he's got it back assward. I mean, I think Biden's got the whole thing back assward. Well, not only is, is Putin trying to get us to stop spreading democracy, name a war between two democracies. In right. the history of warfare, have we right. ever had a war between two democracies? We go to court to settle property disputes. The Chinese build military bases over islands disputed by other nations. So this is a very big deal. Again, would the Ukraine give up their nukes knowing what happened to them today, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? So we gotta get this right. So here's what we should do. We should impose sanctions on Russia today based on the military buildup. The military buildup is provocative. It's threatened the territorial integrity of, of the Ukraine, which throws the whole world into chaos. So why don't we do sanctions against the buildup and if they stand down, we'll take the sanctions down. That's what Trump would do. That's what Ronald Reagan would do. We've got a weak group of people in the White House. People are taking advantage of them. And we haven't mentioned Iran at all. The Iranians are marching toward a nuclear weapon because they don't believe Biden will do a damn thing about it. And we're putting Israel in a world of hurt. Um, Senator, how much of this Russian threat, Putin threat, stems from the catastrophe in Afghanistan? Uh, 90 percent of it. But you got to remember that Joe Biden has been on the world stage for 40 years. His time in the Senate was not reinforcing that he has a view of strength, that America first was the Trump policy. I don't know what the Biden policies have been other than he's been wrong about everything. But when we pulled the rug out from Afghanistan, when we left American citizens behind and abandoned thousands who fought us fought along our side against radical Islam, we set in motion Taiwan, Ukraine, and a march toward a nuclear weapon by the Iranians. It all goes back to, I think, 90% of it to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to get Congress to get involved to bolster Biden's hand. We should have sanctions placed on Russia today based on their military buildup. I'm going to help you on that, Senator. I'm going to campaign for it. I think you're spot on. I said it. I was. I said it last evening and the evening before with Robert O'Brien. We should have slapped on the Nord Stream two sanctions again. Yes. But you know what? You're saying uh, even broader economic and banking sanctions. I, I love that. I'm, I'm going to campaign for that. I think that's a terrific idea, sir. Last one, Senator Graham, uh, regarding Taiwan. How does this affect China and Taiwan? Well, I think if the Russians get away with this to back us down in terms of being friendly to the Ukraine, trying to expand NATO, NATO is a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, they, they're testing Biden, and, uh, Putin is, and, you know, the, the Chinese are watching. 
At the end of the day, we've enticed the Taiwanese to live free and democratically. We have sold them weapons. We have stood by their side. We did the same with the Ukraine. We said, break away from the former Soviet Union. Embrace democracy, the rule of law. It is a corrupt country, but headed in the right direction. This is a big friggin' deal. Everything we've been doing for the last 40 years can be lost. So we need to stand up strong to Putin or we're going to lose Taiwan. We need to revisit what we did in Afghanistan, and we need to be telling the Iranians pretty quickly here that if you continue to enrich, enrich at 60 to 90 percent level, then uh, uh, military force will be used to stop your program. Uh, quick pivot. Last one, sir, I promise. Joe Manchin really trashed uh, so-called yeah, BBB that. yesterday. He really yeah. just nailed it one after another. I don't know if you heard my opening. I just quoted a it few is. things that he said, uh, but it, um, it uh, sent a shiver down my spine. Um, can this thing be paused and uh, defeated? So. Can we kill the bills, uh, Lindsey Graham? Yeah, I think so. So Friday, I will get a, a score from the Congressional Budget Office. I, along with a ranking Republican in the House, has asked the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, to score a bill back better without sunsets. You and I know that these new programs won't go away in one year, two years, or three years. They're never going away. Ronald Reagan said the closest thing to immortality on earth is a government program. So Joe Manchin has said the reason the bill's at $1.7 trillion is because of budget gimmicks that artificially limit the, the, the length of these programs. So Friday afternoon, the Congressional Budget Office is going to score the bill as if these programs lasted for 10 years, not one year. They're going to give me a number about how that would affect the deficit. I think it will double the cost of the bill and increase the deficit seven or eight fold, which I think will be an off ramp for Joe Manchin. Yeah, there you go. Senator Lindsey Graham, thank you, sir. You know, sir, our new show is not official until you come on. Now it's an <laughs> official show. I shall return. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Thank Great you. to see you.